What do you think when you hear of a man who is single, 25 years of age, and regularly pays for sex with prostitutes because he is shy and too shy to pull a woman in a nightclub? Do you think what a pathetic sick man having to hand over money for sex? Or would you say fair play to me, single, he's not doing any harm to anyone? Well, a regular listener called Paul has been in contact with us wanting this brought up. He's been in this situation and wants to know what the public opinion is about someone like himself regularly paying for sex. He clearly doesn't see the harm. Is there anybody nowadays who does see harm in this? As long as the man uh, paying for the sex is single. Well, here's his email that he sent to us. Um, Adrian, call me Paul. I'm a regular listener of your show and I wondered if you would bring this up on your show. I'm 25 single and regularly go to escorts mainly in the Northwood region of Dublin which is uh, between Santry and Ballymun there now I'm not a bad looker but I just can't ever get with the ladies on a night out I'm sick of wasting my time and money going to clubs trying to chat up women buying them drinks and whatever when I can just pay 150 quid and spend the hour with a gorgeous lady it's hassle free and she'll generally do anything you ask for the entire hour I'm just curious, would anyone have a problem with me doing this or would anyone judge me for what I do? Thanks, lads. And that's from a guy called Paul. And like I said, the question is, would you call a bloke like that pathetic? I mean, he says... Um, or does he say he's not a bad-looking bloke? Yeah, I'm not a bad looker. And he can't pull a woman. What's up with that? Elaine, you're on FM 104. How are you, Elaine? Hi, Adrian. How are you? I'm grand, thanks, Elaine. Now, uh, Elaine, you reckon that... <laughs> What Paul is saying in his email is a poor excuse, is it? Ah, uh, yeah. It's just like, Adrian, why would you... Like a 25-year-old man. Like, a nurse is about 40 stone and just, you know, has nothing going for him or whatever. Why would you need to do that? Well, he says in his email, I'm single, um, uh, not a bad looker, but I just can't ever get with the ladies on a night out. Yeah, now... He hasn't really said why. Like, has he got a hump on his back or something? Like, No, he says I'm not a bad looker. So I'm assuming he's telling the truth when he says that. He's not a bad-looking bloke. I think that's just a pure excuse. I just think he's just saying that and just, you know, maybe he, maybe he just can do what he wants. What, you can't understand how anyone who doesn't look like the elephant man would go to uh, a hooker? Sorry, Adrian, what was that? You can't understand why anybody who doesn't look like the elephant man would go to a hooker. No, 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 no. But what I'm saying is, like, a 25-year-old man who says he's, got, he's, he's not bad-looking, well... Why does he feel he has to pay for it? I don't understand that. I just think that's a poor excuse. You think it's a poor excuse? Yes. And would you? what would your attitude be if you found out one of your mates regularly used a hooker? What would you think of him? I wouldn't necessarily think. I just think, well, why would you need to do that? Like, seriously, I don't understand why, why anybody needs to pay for a prostitute. In other words, he should be able to get with a woman. He um, yeah, he should be. If, look, if he's saying he's a good-looking enough guy, right, he's, and he's confident enough in himself, well then, I mean, like, to chat a woman up, sure, it can't be that hard. Can it? I don't know. I just, I just think that's a poor excuse, really. Maybe he just wants to be with prostitutes, and that's what he's, you know, really wants. Okay, but stay there for one second. Six seven nine seven one zero four. She thinks that's um, a weak excuse that he just can't get with a woman. You see, do you not get um, uh, Elaine that it can be very difficult for a bloke to chat up women? Ah, uh, yeah, I know Ken. Yeah, Ken. I know some men can feel quite intimidated. Yeah, by women, but like, it's all that right. Okay, you can be intimidated by successful women or men, you know, or, or women or men that make you feel inadequate. But, like, to go as far as having to pay a prostitute, I just think that's a bit OTT. OK, a bit OTT. Um, Noel, you're on FM 104. How are you, Noel? Hey, Legion, how's it going? Grand, How thank you, Noel. Now, well, you're very welcome, Noel. Thanks for ringing. Um, now, what did you want to say on this? Well, first of all, I, I'd be... Uh, I'd very much support that gentleman there uh, who actually said openly that he went to what we would call in my industry is sex houses. Uh, right. I've often, the profession I'm in, to be honest, I'm a taxi man. And just the, the hours I work, you know, it's very convenient if you get me, like, we don't have time to go out clubbing or time going. I've often spent the night's wages that I'd earn, say, on a Tuesday or Wednesday and went to a sex house around the Clumman area at three or four in the morning. You know, it's very convenient. Like, so 
I can, you can take a different perspective on it if you get me like. Okay, so you have gone. You've gone to these places. Oh yeah, I go. Maybe not every week. Maybe once a fortnight. Maybe once a fortnight. Okay. Yeah. And okay, but you're saying your excuse, if there, if if that's the word we need, if you need an excuse, convenient. it's convenient for you, um, and you don't because of the hours that you work and whatever, you don't get to have that brilliant a social life. Yeah, but I do agree that a lot of when you're out on the town or out wherever you are, that a lot comes down to personality. You know, you mightn't be the type of fella that can get up on the stage, take a shirt off, make a laugh at a fella beside him, throw a drink over him, and then get on with things and try and pull a woman. You mm. know. You might be the kind of fella that goes out, has a couple of drinks with the lads. You might be the most manly man in the place, you know. Might be the best looking fella. It doesn't mean he's the best personality, you know. And it takes sort of a bit of a charisma, you know. And a lot of men don't actually have that. And And are you saying you don't have that? Well, I'm not saying I don't have that, but I don't have the time to use it, if you get me. So, but I I don't like calling them prostitutes now. I think that's a bit American. It's a bit... Well, it, 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 Well, it is what they are, is it not? Well, you know, everybody has their profession, everybody has their talents and that. But what I think, I think it's very convenient. And in Dublin especially, it's becoming more and more convenient. I'm, I actually was from Bunkana originally, before I moved here in the 90s. And prostitution in Dublin is far more on the rise. That place has become far more convenient, far more available, you know? And, OK, you're saying you, you go to a particular place in Crumlin. This guy, Paul, who sent us the email, uses a, some place in, a sex house, as you call it, in, uh, obviously in one of the apartments in Northwood. Um, and y- so basically what you're saying is it's convenient, you go in, you do what you do, and off you go. Yeah, like, I, I'd be on first name terms with everybody, and they're like, there is a lot of people that come in and like to be kept anonymous. They don't even share their name, you know? Mm. But a lot of people have to put down a contact detail you know, for obvious reasons, HIV, chlamydia, that kind of thing. You know, if that spreads, they find the source of it, you know, and then obviously you're excluded then from whatever. So it is actually a safe outlet for safe sex, if you if you understand me. You okay, know. Uh, Elaine, are you still there? I am. Well, there you are. He's a taxi driver. It's convenient for him to pop in at the end of a day's work. Um, to... Convenient? No, Adrian, it's convenient to pop in for a pint of milk. Do you know, in your local spa, not to pop in after you do a night shift to your local brothel. Can I ask that chap a question? Are you in a relationship? I'm not. No way, I'm not. I'm, I'm actually out of a two-year relationship. Okay, and like, so if you met, like, for instance, you see if you and I met out and we were talk, to talk about past history, would you tell me you were a prostitute? Well, obviously not, no. That'd be kind of shooting me stuff. All right, okay, so you'd lie. So you're lying. But, uh, but uh, I, I, I would imagine, I'm Elaine... I'm really lying. I, I couldn't see you turning around to me and saying... Hey, have you ever been with a prostitute? And and to be honest with you, Elaine, and in fact, that's an interest. It's an interesting question. Elaine, it's an interesting question that you raise, whether or not uh, guys would actually tell the truth about that question. And I, I'm figuring, Noel, you probably wouldn't. I, to be honest, I was reading a book there the other day and it was actually, I'm not going to name the order or the title, but it says that 93% of men would not brag about it, would not even talk openly to uh, uh, About using a prostitute. I agree with you 100%, yeah. Jennifer, you're on FM 104. How are you, Jennifer? I'm oh, sorry. How are you, Jennifer? Now, what did you want to say on this? Um, I just want to know what Paul's chat-up lines are. Like, you know what I mean? If he's out in the nightclub and he's 25, he's good-looking and he's not able to get a girl... And he goes and spends 150 on a prostitute. I just don't understand that. Do you know what I mean? He must be doing something wrong. He must be doing something wrong. No, I mean, girls love. Girls love when fellas buy them drinks in nightclubs. Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah, but uh, some girls can be so. I mean, maybe not the girls that he's chatting up or whatever, but some girls can be so dismissive and uh, abrupt and whatever. And if you're even vaguely shy, it can be an absolute nightmare. I mean, it's easy for girls to say that because girls are the ones that generally, not always, but generally are the ones that uh, that get talked to. They don't have to go the, and do the talking. Why are you going to a prostitute asking for fucking this and that off them? Do you know what I mean? Someone that he doesn't know. Going up to, like, well, we're, like, me and my friend are sitting here on the car. We're from Sanchi. We live right beside Northwood. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's loads of places around, loads of pubs, like, even pubs, nightclubs. I don't know how you could, like, how can you justify paying 150 euros to go off with someone you don't know? Like, cats, whatever, STIs, that's my only God knows. Well, uh, but, Noel, just before the break there, you were saying that it's actually a very safe way to have sex. It is, yeah, well, I, I don't know what Geno or Geno, I'm sure Geno is the short for Jennifer, but 
I, I didn't even hear what she said. It was just mumbled to me now. I didn't understand the word. She said maybe the accent, but... Oh, no. <laughs> no, definitely, I would say it's probably a more safer way than pulling a girl in a nightclub, you know? I've often went back to coppers. They're staying a night off or I, on a Christmas party or that. I, like, you, how do you know? You, them girls are not sourced. They're not checked regularly. You could have a girl there that goes to, say, some sort of college, you know, uh, National College of Ireland or Dublin Institute of Technology or Dundalk or something, you know. And they might be out every night of the week. They might be out more than the prostitutes themselves. And yet... And you wouldn't have a clue. Them, you know, it's up to themselves to check themselves worse. You go to, say, as I used to call it, a sex house, because that's, that's technically what it is, you know. Well, OK, stay there for one second, both of you. Let me go to um, Rachel. You're on FM 104. How are you, Rachel? Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Now, Rachel, you yourself are actually an escort. I am, yes. And what do you want to say on this? Um, men go to see escorts for uh, different reasons. OK, so what Some sort of reasons have you heard as to why men want to be with you? Some are married and they don't get sex at home. Okay, yeah. Uh, some are single and they cannot be, they don't have time to go and look for a woman. Like like this guy, Paul, that's his, re- well, it's not the, well, no, sorry, Noel was saying that. He's a taxi driver and he doesn't really have much time to be out chatting exactly. up women. Or um, they go out, but uh, for whatever reason, they don't get the sex. Okay, so they don't, like, like, like this guy, Paul, he doesn't manage to crack a woman on a night out. Or, or she's not interested in having sex with them. Yes. Um, there are people that are uh, people married for years. They are very happy. Uh, they are very, to say, in love. But the sex is not there. What is the man supposed to do? And can I ask you, how do you feel as an escort, or do you even think about it, uh, about, for example, being with a guy that you know is married? Because I assume a lot of them do tell you their status and whatever, do they? I provide a service. I don't uh, care or ask if they're married or not. I do my job. I get paid to do my job. Mm -hmm. That's it. Simple as that. I don't care. You don't care. So he he, uh, arrives, he does what he does, and off he goes, and that's your arrangement completed. Yes, of course. I have to, I'm doing my job. I don't care if the people are married or single or for whatever reason they don't get sex. That is not my problem. Now, when it comes to the, like I said, the men that come to visit you, I mean, do you, I would have thought, I could be wrong, it, it, there has to come times, Rachel, when you're doing, you know, you're, you're waiting for your next customer to arrive or your next client to arrive. All right. And some man that's just hideous looking walks in the door. How do you deal with that? If I don't like his look. Yeah. Um. I don't judge people by the look. I don't take customers by their look. The people who come to see me, um, first of all, they have to have nice manners, be polite, be a gentleman. Okay, so you won't tolerate any rudeness or whatever. Exactly. Okay, fine. Um, but So you don't judge people on their looks because, what, they're paying you money? Yes, of course. And how long have you been doing this? Um, five years. Five years, and I, I'm taking it you're not from Dublin, obviously. No, uh, I'm from Spain. You're from Spain? I live in Spain. I'm from Romania originally. Okay, you're originally from... Okay, Romania. originally from Romania. Yeah. You, you live in Spain and you're here in Ireland. Yeah, I'm here in Ireland for the last three years. Oh, right, okay. Um, and what brought you to Ireland to work as an escort? You've been doing it for five years. You obviously did it for a period of time in Spain as well, did you? Yes, um, the money wouldn't be the weather. <laughs> no, it's certainly not the weather. No, I give you, I grant you that. So you came here because what? The money is better in Ireland, is it? Yes. And because I could ask you questions all night on this, because I know it's something that people find fascinating. Um, how many clients, on average, would you see in a week? Um, I see two, maybe three clients, maybe none in a day. Two or three, sometimes none. Yes, in a day. Okay, so in a week you could, what, 20? Okay. Or would that be, would, Let's say 20. Would, would 20 be a good week? Yes. 20 would be a good week. Um, right, and do you operate independently or do you operate with, uh, with somebody who, who runs you, basically? 
on my own, I pay my own accommodation, so set up myself, do everything on my own. Okay, so you advertise yourself however you advertise yourself, all by yourself? Yes. Um, and is it not a very dangerous thing to do on your own? Okay, you're here, you're earning money, and by the sounds of it, you're earning fairly good money. Would I be right? What? The law is the law is the law to work alone in um, an accommodation. It is legal to work with somebody else. It is illegal to work alone. It is very dangerous. Yes, that's what I was going to ask you. Else, it is safer. So, what is safer? Uh, to share with somebody, it is safer. Sometimes I share, and sometimes I don't. Okay, but um, have you had any in in the five years that you have been doing what you do? Have you come across any danger? Have you been threatened? Have you been harmed in any way? Never harmed. Um, threats, yes. Um, never harmed. And what, what sort of threats? Uh, for example, a quick example, I can think of uh, people coming in uh, the middle of the night and uh, kicking my door. Oh, right, and demanding to see you there and then kind of thing? Uh, there weren't clients. There were just people knowing what uh, was going on in the apartment and they just banged the door. Oh, right, okay. Because a, lot of, of the night, so. because a lot of people wouldn't be overly happy with having somebody providing the service that you provide in the apartment next door to them, would they? Many of them, yes. Many of them what? They wouldn't be happy. Yes, they wouldn't uh, be. If, yes. Because there's different strangers coming in and out of the apartment block all the time. It could be. Okay, so you are aware that what you do in Ireland is illegal. Yes. Okay. Um, and but but listening to you, you seem very comfortable with what you do. Are you? Yes, I I like it. It is my job. Um, and that's how you see it as a job. Yes. It it is nothing wrong. Uh, I have my own uh, morals. I come from a different country. I can understand Irish people have their own morals and different views on prostitution. Um, but uh, to tell me that is wrong what I'm doing or try to convince me, it's kind of no. I understand and respect, but the people do not respect and understand me for my own views. And, and, okay, but you're doing it... You, you can't be doing it because you love it, can you? Why not? Really? Do you actually enjoy what you do? I enjoy what I do. I meet really lovely people. Um, so you, you you do what you do as an escort here in Dublin totally by choice? Yes. You could walk away from it at any time? Yes, of course. I did it in the past. I can do it tomorrow if I want to. I can look for a job. I have no problem with that. Okay, but but at this moment, by the sounds of it, you're earning fairly good money. Yes, I mean, three grand a week, you could be pulling in, could you? I could, yes. So if the money is good and I can afford the life I want to, why would I go to look for another job? Also, if I get, uh, for example, into a relationship and I want to be serious about it and start just to have a family, I would leave the work and look for something else. One of the questions I asked uh, Noel a couple of minutes ago, who uh, uses escorts, was would he ever admit to a new girlfriend or a new woman in his life that he used escorts? And he said, no, probably not. Would you ever admit to um, a a boyfriend that you might meet in a pub, what you do? At the moment, no, it's none of his business. (laughs) So what, you could see yourself maybe one day getting married to somebody and not ever telling telling him that you were a prostitute? Uh, Or an escort or whatever? I would, yes. Because I see it as a job. I don't see it as nothing dirty. So probably I would, yes. Elaine, are you still there? Oh, she's not there. I was going to go, I was going to go back to Elaine uh, just to find out uh, what... The people, the people who see a prostitute, they don't have to go home and say uh, to the wife, I have been with a prostitute. They don't have to. Why would they? No, and I'm sure, <laughs> and I'm sure most of them pure, don't. There is pure sex what is going on between an escort and the client. There is no emotions involved. The woman see it as a threat when it is not. We don't get... Oh, you're saying you're, you're, you're not a threat to marriages in, in Dublin, you're not a threat to relationships even, and you're providing a valuable service for single guys? Yes. For single and for married. 
we are not a threat. We don't get emotional with the clients. We just provide sex. And do you have many regular clients? I do, yes. And do you, I mean, do you know, I assume you know their names or at least the names they've told you. Do you, do you develop a kind of a, a rapport with them? I don't know their names. I don't ask them their names. I just call them, I don't know, honey. Okay, and, and that's it? Yes, that's it. I, I don't know. I don't care. OK, stay there for one second, Rachel. Uh, Mark, you're on FM 104. How are you, Mark? It's Mick. Oh, Mick. Sorry, Mick. How are you? It's Grant. Good, Mick. Now, what did you want to say on this? Well, f- first of all, it w- um, I was going to say that I felt sorry for the girls, first of all, right? But but uh, Rachel seems to know what she's doing, OK? But uh, um, fortunately, Rachel, is, or unfortunately, she's probably one in a thousand that's working tonight, that's... She seems to know what she's doing. There's other people working that have have really no choice. You know? Okay, well, Rachel, what do you say to that? That okay, maybe you have your head screwed on. You know precisely what you're doing. You know uh, you're doing it for money and and good money by the sounds of it. Um, but you don't. Do, do you accept that some women, and this is the point that Mick is making, some women are forced into prostitution. This is for me? Yes, that's for you, yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, women get into prostitution, again, for different reasons. Some of them are in prostitution to support their families. Some of them want to buy a house. Some of them to buy a car. Or the mother is in the hospital or for whatever reason. Some of them make a living out of prostitution. Okay, but uh, yeah, but do you accept that there are women that are in prostitution a- a- against their will? Coerced. Pardon me? You mean coerced? Yes. Or? Yes. Against their will. Yes. I've never came across with uh, an escort to be forced or against her will. Never. I'm not saying they're not, but I've never seen uh, such a thing. Also, the Gardi always um, raid apartments from time to time. They never come across with one. So where are the, these uh, escorts who work against their will? if nobody can find them. Because they're, they're working so much against their will that they can't come forward, that they can't uh, tell the truth of, of the situation really, that they're in. Really, but if I'm forced, okay, and I don't want to be in a place, if the police it is next to me, I would ask for help. Well, now, uh, yeah, go on, Mick, yeah. Yeah, well, well, the reason I came on was to answer the question as well. I'm sorry, Rachel, for ignoring you for a moment. Um, but the thing about it is, I think that... I've often thought about this myself as a bloke. I don't know how the lads have the nerve to do it. OK, first of all, right? Why? Afraid of what? No, have the nerve to go with a prostitute. Why? I don't know. I wouldn't have the nerve to go up to a prostitute. Why? You wouldn't have the... You'd be afraid of what might happen? You'd be afraid no, to... I wouldn't have the bottle. I'd rather go out and chat someone up if that was the case, but I'm uh, happily married. But, but but the thing about it is, I think it is just convenience anyway, and it's for a lot of different reasons. A lot of diff- a lot of blokes have different contra- contra- uh, thing of sex, right? Mm-hmm. They pay a girl, they go and do what they want. They don't have to care about them. There's no relationship. They just get in there, have the sex, and boy, boy. And, and let me ask you, Mick, <clears throat> what do you what is what is your feeling on, for example, Paul, who sent me the email in the first place? I think he could have a problem with chatting, chatting girls up. And I'd say he's got to the stage where, well, you know, feck it, I could just go and pay for it and get it, you know, and have me sex. You know what I mean? Like, if, if, you're, going to get into, if you're going to go out and chat someone up, you sort of have to get into a relationship. You're going to be nice to them. And when you're having sex with them, you have to be nice to them. And I think most folks just want to get in there, pay for it, and do what they want, and not care about the girl. Okay, can I say something now? You can, of course. Go on. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Look, this is, uh, I've never been to Amsterdam, but uh, I think the Amsterdam is the type you get in the room, uh, take your pants off, um, have sex, come and go. Uh, what is happening now with the way I'm working, it is nothing like that. I'm nice to people. If the person who rings me is not nice on the phone, he will never reach my door. Because he'll never find where your door is. Yes, I will never tell him where I am. I won't see him if he's not nice over the phone with me. Also, if the, the client uh, gets into um, my accommodation, we have a chat first. 
it's not like I will take my pants off. We will have a chat and maybe I will have a drink. We will have a laugh. And Before any, in other words, exactly. you're, you're, you'll try and suss them out. Exactly. Okay, Sarah, you're on FM 104. How are you, Sarah? Hey, Adrian, how's it going? Grand, thanks, Sarah. What did you want to say on this? Um, well, I, I threw you in first to the show saying that um, I felt sorry for her because I thought that she actually had to do it. Like, you know, like you hear of stories of prostitutes haven't got, like, they haven't got any choice to do it. And Mind you, you know, Rachel is saying she's never met a girl yeah. like that. I, I, she's a dirty tramp. My God, she's one of my... Well, that's disgusting what you're doing. Like, it's actually, it's not like you're doing it to feed your kids or and it's, it's to feed a habit, and you're actually doing it because you like it. That's absolutely... And I, actually, that's a question I didn't even ask you, uh, Rachel, because some prostitutes are doing it to feed a drug habit. Is that your issue? No? My, no, no, not, not at all, no. Well, she sounds like she has her head well screwed on. That's what I don't get. Like, it's, it's oh, that's absolutely disgusting. Like, do you not want a relationship with anybody? Because if a man found out that you are a prostitute in years to come, they're not going to want to touch you. Um, I don't want a relationship. Like, your point, I understand your point of view, and I respect it. I don't feel uh, dirty, whatever you call me, whatsoever. It doesn't really bother me. I, I, and, and, and like you, like you said, Sarah, she sounds like she has her head screwed on. She knows precisely what she's doing. She knows. Like, if it's is it just about money or is it the sex? Like, well, uh, there's another question, Rachel. Do you ever enjoy the sex with these men? Ninety-nine percent. Ninety-nine percent. Yes. Yes. Oh, you actually do? Oh, my God. Because I was going to say, you could just go out and find it, like a big rich guy or something if it was about the money. And not, like, actually... I mean, that, that's the practically thing. the same thing, Sarah. That's practically <laughs> okay, the same well, thing. Yeah, but you're not... Yeah, but there's less chances of STDs danger-wise as well. Like, my God. But it, it, What's that noise? Rachel, you don't seem to think that there's a danger here, do you? There is no danger. Um, but there is danger. Well, there is danger. There is danger. Can I say there is no danger because uh, yeah, because you say you chat to them and stuff. Protected sex. We do not work without a condom. Oh no, I'm not talking about just sex wise. I'm not talking about danger there. Like I'm talking about these these men. I know you say you chat to them and all that, and I, like I I understand that. But they could snap at any minute if they if they don't like you or anything. Yeah. Crazy men out there. Yeah. They could snap and they could break your neck in two. And it should. Yeah. You, so there is a huge danger there. You should just stop what you're doing, honest to God, because someday you're going to end up getting hurt. Yes. Do you do you ever see yourself giving it up, Rachel? Like, do you, I mean, do you have a target of the amount of money you want to save, or what? What's what's your motivation? What what I have ma- a target? Yes, indeed. And until I don't have all the money for it, I will not stop working. It is dangerous, indeed. But then again, we I still have uh, do make money. And the money well, I need. Claim, like you're over in Ireland, you could claim welfare. You could, like, you you don't need to actually do that. In this well, country. she wouldn't earn three grand a month um, no, or three grand a week on welfare. No, she wouldn't. But she's. I I don't, don't understand that. Like, how much is she charging to be earning that much? Well, uh, what would you be charging? 150. Well, if it's anything like what Paul pays, 150 quid an hour or something like that. It's two thirty for the hour. Two thirty for an hour. An hour. Oh Jesus! Christ. I just think I just I honestly, she sounds like a really nice girl, and I, that's why I can't get my head around it. So the head is screwed on her shoulder, but you're still, you're, you're still a slut. Like I'm sorry, but you're still a dirty tramp. I think I think if everyone would just agree for the escorts to work uh, one with each other, to be to share an apartment, all well, the things. Hang on a minute. Danger, I'm, well, hang on. Low. No, because come here and I tell you something. If I if I lived in an apartment block and I knew there was a prostitute and a strange man were coming and going, I wouldn't be happy. I'd be complaining about that too. Yes, I understand that. And that like we have like we have an apartment block in our town, and I'm not joking with you. There's about six apartments that are empty in it, and they'll never be let out because there's there's a prostitute in it. Yes, in I block. understand. I understand that. But then again, so you're like you're kind of not just putting yourself in danger. You're putting other people in that building in danger as well. Yes, I understand that. But then again, if the girls are moving, the escorts, the prostitutes, whatever you want to call them, are moving from that building, they will go to another place, which will be worse for them. Because how would that, how would that be worse? Them. But it's not, no, well, it'd be different if they were like doing it because they need to feed their kids or something, and then you can you could help them. You don't need help because you're doing it because you like it. 
That's different. You don't need help. You're doing it because you like it. But we still have protection. We still need protection. We still No, you don't, because you're not being forced to do it. So you don't deserve no protection. You're not being forced to do anything. But it is my choice. It's and my uh, choice. Sarah, can I ask you how, how, what your reaction is when she said, uh, as she did earlier on, I don't care if they're married men, I don't care if they're single men, I don't care if they're, they've girlfriends, they, they come, they pay me 200 and whatever it is, 30 euro for an hour, and off they go. That's it. That's our arrangement complete. I, I just can't get my head around that, like, that she's doing it and not feeding, like, a habit or our kids or something like that. I do, I, I honestly, I, I've never heard of anybody that just does it because they like it and the money. Like, I don't. You're welcome any time to come and stay with me for one day while I work to see how the things are done. And I know, I know, I know how sex is done, love. <laughs> I know how that's done. Like, I don't need to come and watch you. But I, I don't understand why you... I just don't understand. Like, like how many men would you be sleeping with a day? Like, it's just dirty and disgusting. It is. It's just disgusting. Sex, sex is actually quite nice. It's not dirty and disgusting. Rachel, do you have a an end date in mind? Do you see a time where you're just going to go, right, that's it? About two, three years more I need... Two or three years. And, and, and what's your aim? To get enough money to do what? To go home and buy a house or or what? To get a house and to get a business going. To get a business going, okay. Um, Mark, you're on FM 104. How are you, Mark? Good, thanks. Now, Mark, what did you want to say on this? Well, basically, I'm 24 and I'm in a similar situation to himself, like uh, to the guy who emailed you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can understand where he's coming from. It's hard to me girls and, and saying oh, the right one and everything but at the end of the day like, he's going to have to basically get himself his self esteem up and by going to a prostitute is just going to do the complete opposite because opposite. at the end of the day he shouldn't have to pay for it some would argue you pay for it every time you go out yeah but not necessarily like like it's ridiculous the way like he gets to the stage where you're gonna to have to pay for it. Like it's not gonna, it's it's not gonna solve. Him. Like you're gonna at some stage have to have a girlfriend, and you know. And uh, what you would never, even though you, even though you can find it a little bit difficult sometimes. I find it extremely difficult. Like I was in, I was in Amsterdam twice, and I was I went over there when I was younger, and and I just. So, so I find it so sad, and I actually feel sorry for the girls who have to degrade themselves to that level, like because it's 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 the lowest of the low. And that girl, Rachel, who was on, she says, "Oh, she she's making it sound absolutely perfect." And she's yeah, I mean, uh, Rachel, you're you're doing a fairly good job of making it yeah, sound like the yeah, the yeah. the the, the, uh, the ideal profession almost. You're creating the worst example for of the women listeners out there. Because they, it's just you can't be like you can't turn in and say this. You said you haven't been harmed. You haven't been harmed yet. Because at the end of the day, he might be as nice as Pisces on the phone, but when he comes to the door, God knows what's going to happen to you. And I wish nothing does happen to you, but you've no idea what could happen, and you're putting yourself in the riskiest trade there is. And you could catch whatever. Oh, you can say, "Oh, we'll wear condoms." That's not gonna. That's, they're not gonna cover cover everything. You, do you worry about the dangers, Rachel? Does it bother you? Do you, or do you just kind of put it to the back of your mind? Um, no, I just got used to it. Um, I don't. I don't think about it. I haven't seen uh, until I see myself in a situation in a bad situation. Then I will just react. Um. I had um, in the town I was working, I had uh, somebody hanging around outside uh, the building I was in, mm. and I just rang the guards. So I just report stuff, and actually the guards are very helpful. And did you tell the guards what you do? Yes, of course. And what did they say about it? They didn't say anything. They helped me. They didn't say anything bad. You told them that you, you, sleep, with, you sleep with men for money? Yes. And they said nothing? Yes. Jesus Christ. Well, it's the, it's the long... Uh, I find it hard to believe that he said absolutely nothing, Rachel. He didn't say, be careful, you're not meant to be doing this, this is against the law or anything like that. It 
it is not against the law because prostitution is not legal, but also is not illegal in Ireland. Once it is only one girl working from an apartment. If the girl it is really? on her own, it is legal. The prostitution it is legal in Ireland. I never knew that. That's news to me. Uh, Liz, you're on FM 104. How are you, Liz? Hi, yeah, uh, no, I was just wondering there, um, that girl, Rachel, that's working as a prostitute, mm. is she yet paying tax over here? Or is she claiming benefits? Would you imagine she's paying tax now? Think about it, logically. No, I wouldn't. No, no I wouldn't claim, myself. I mean that she's uh, claiming benefits, like unemployment benefit plus rent, rent allowance. Well, Rachel, are you claiming any benefits? No. You're not claiming benefits? No. And is there no questions asked about where you're getting money to pay rent and for living in the country? I don't quite understand. Okay, you're, you're, you're able to pay rent on an apartment. Um, yeah. Is nobody asking any questions about where your money's coming from? No. Do you get rid of the money out of this country? Or do you... You hardly pop it in the bank now, do you? Yeah, in the bank. Really? Um, yes. Um, if I make, uh, like you said before, uh, 3000 a week, okay, I have to pay accommodations. When mm-hmm. I work, I have to pay profile, I have to buy food, I have to buy so many things. So there is not actually 3,000. No, I, I understand. You probably so don't make 3,000 profit, but... Um, at the end of the week can be... No, but the point that, she, that Liz is making is it's tax-free money you're getting and you're popping it into a bank for the tax man to see it. And he'll be very interested in you. Yeah, and they're not only that. So then she's just taking it out of the country. Nothing's being put back into the economy. So that's why the economy is as bad as it is. Well, I doubt it's because of a couple of hundred prostitutes, no, but... No, but... I'm talking about, like, in general, with the people that are walking in the country, that are just taking them... Uh, walking here, just taking the money straight back out. Which would, quite... there, is, there is a limit uh, to put money in the bank account, as far as I know, and there is a limit to send money uh, back to another country. If you send more than 3000 a month, they will ask where you got the money from. But if it's less than that, no questions? No, no questions for for three thousand. More than three thousand, you have to give to give to give explanations from you where you got the money. For surely, if you're sending three thousand every month, they must like you could they could see that pattern, and they must be wondering like where is the money coming from? Okay, uh, three thousand euros. I can uh, send them without any questions, and the rest of them I just spend it here. And that every month you can send back three thousand. So over a year. That's thirty six thousand that you can actually send out of the country with no ta- no questions being asked. Um, this is the law. I don't pay tax uh, because I cannot pay tax on my job. I will be obviously yeah. pay it tomorrow. Yeah, well, obviously. I mean, that, I, 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 I suppose if you think it does, it does bring up the whole argument about legalizing prostitution because um, you know, what's, if you ring the tax man and say, "How are you? I'd like to give you money. What's your job? I'm a prostitute." The tax man wouldn't know what to do. Do you know what I mean? Um, no, da- again, I'm just touring Ireland. I don't stay here. I'm not an um, Irish citizen. No, I understand that, yeah. And, uh, but you've been here for three years, is that right? I come and go, but I tour Ireland since 2009, end of 2009, 2010. And when you say tour Ireland, like you're, you're based in Dublin at the moment, what, you might be based somewhere else after that? Oh, no, I just tour Ireland, all over Ireland. I don't have a, a stable place. All right, and then I just go to back to Spain. Uh, sometimes I go to Romania. Mostly I go to Spain. OK, well, a couple more calls. Da- uh, Donna, you're on FM 104. Hi, you, Donna. Hi, how are you? Very quickly, Donna, what do you want to say on this? I just want to say, she's not afraid that she's going to get murdered or she's going to end up with some little scumbag. Like, <laughs> talking about taxes and all. We're not talking about taxes. She's talking about prostitution. Is she not afraid that her life is in danger dealing with scumbags? That, like, if they're not good enough, like, most men out there can have sex with anybody. Why are they paying her to have sex? Like, do you know what I mean? Is she not afraid of her own life? What's going to happen to her? Well, what, what's the worst thing that ever happened? <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. The worst thing that ever happened to you, Rachel, was that guy tried to kick down your door? Yes. And other than that, most of your clients have been nice, decent blokes, have they? Yes. What kind of man that pays for sex is a nice, decent bloke, Rachel? Have you no self-respect for yourself, no? Um, and they're talking about taxes. 
Have you children? No, I don't have children. I'm surprised you don't have children being a prostitute. I thought you'd be sprouting them out all over the place. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, and the person in the background is laughing. This is not a funny subject. Like, you're a prostitute. You have sex with men. My, my understanding, though, Donna, is that the girl who's in the background, if I'm not mistaken, Rachel, is also an escort. Is that right? Uh, well, then that's why she finds it funny, because the same mentality. That's disgraceful. Okay, I understand. You should be ashamed of yourself. And what's worse is you're getting on the FM 104 phone show, and you're telling people... Do you not think that people are going to know your voice and know what you're talking about and know you? Do you not care? Have you no morals? No. You're a knacker. You're a dirty little knacker. You want to go, yeah, okay, yourself. Thank you very much. Started. Thank you very much. You're well, welcome, I Rachel. I didn't know what you say. You know what you say to your customers. Thank you very much when they hand you over the money. My okay. God. I mean, I we all have you. money problems. I'm struggling at the moment, but I would never sell myself at but all. That is, only, that is, is your that what you came over to Ireland for, is it? Came over to Ireland so that you could, what, pimp yourself out? Okay. Okay. Where, where do you... Hang on, let, 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 her, let her answer, Donna, let her answer. Go on, uh, Rachel. Yeah. Um, I did not insult you, so please don't insult me. I respect you're the You're insulting point of yourself, view. love, with the life that you're living. You're a knacker. You're a prostitute. Let her answer. Go on, Rachel. Okay. Uh, your point of view, it is yours. I don't see it as yourself. I can respect yours, but you cannot, obviously, respect my point of view. That's it. Okay, well... And, uh, what is your point of view? She's trying to explain that she's here. She's here. She wants to make money um, with a view to leaving the country, uh, buying a house and setting up a business. Yeah, and what bank is going to give you money for prostitution, love? I didn't think... It, 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 what sort of a business is it you want to set up, let Rachel? Me tell you, let me tell you one thing. Your looks will only last for so long. What bank is going to... Oh, oh you're a prostitute. Oh, that's grand. There you go. There's a loan. Here, now, there Rachel, go. what sort of business do you want to eventually set up? A nightclub. A nightclub? <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> <A> burlesque. <laughs> Right, good luck, Donna. One last call on this. Uh, John, you're on FM 104. How are you, John? Hi, Aidan. How are you doing? Um, just, just, just what I can't get the fuck out of my head. Why the fuck would, you know, would a man actually go out and pay another girl to actually just look at the same thing that another girl has? I, 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 you know, it just kills me. Because, like, you know, like to me, all girls have the fucking exact same thing. A pussy and a pair of fucking tits. You know, to me, she's a fucking tramp and a slut. Because, you know, because, you know, because to me, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you're. you're but, but, but John, I, I, I'll, I'll say this much, and I'm, uh, Rachel, I'll bring you in on this. Uh, I'm assuming there is no shortage of business in Ireland. That's no, why you're there's here. There's no, no, but you know, but you know, but you know, at the end of the day, you, the likes of her shouldn't be allowed into the country. But she she hardly arrived at Dublin Airport and said, "How are you? I'm I'm here to work as an escort." Yeah, yeah, yeah but still, Adrian, you know, the likes of that shouldn't be allowed in the fucking country at all. You know, because she's putting fuck all money back into fucking Ireland. But sure, that's because what she's doing is illegal. Yeah, of course, because you're tramping her. That's all she is. She's giving Ireland a bad reputation. Uh, well, she, she's not the only one doing it now, uh, John. Just go on to any of those websites and you'll see there's hundreds of them. It's, yeah, the hundreds of them. It's all the same, Adrian. They're all tramps. Rachel, does that bother you to be called names like that? I don't care. I don't There's plenty of women out there, Adrian. You know, you, you know, okay, but, uh, but what I've been hearing, John, is that a lot of men are in uh, relationships where they love their wife dearly, but the sex just isn't there. Uh, single guys who have a pain in their face trying to pull a woman and just can't get, uh, just are too shy or whatever the case may be. And that's where somebody like Rachel comes in. Fuck, fuck, two and six to order for an hour. No, uh, two thirty. Use me fucking hand for twenty minutes and come. <laughs> oh my! Oh, you're so serious, eh? It's true, Adrian. Just use your fucking hand and shoot your load. Look at a magazine, two hundred and sixty euro. A fucking fight for a magazine, a fucking despair. Do you know what I mean, like? Okay, so and what do you think? And this goes back to the start of our conversation, John. What do you think of guys who are paying for this service? Guys who are doing this every day of the week. Don't need just go out and buy a blue movie. Fucking stick it in the DVD. Go home, pull the promo off yourself. What's, what's, you know, like, what's the difference? Just pull a bit of Vaseline in your fucking hand and away you go. It's fucking it's stupid, like. 200 okay, you, you, obviously, I'm, I'm taking, you would never um, find yourself um, that desperate. I wouldn't, me fuck, 260 quid. I'd rather piss up against the wall. 
All right. know, how do you know about the 60 quid? You just go on and on and on about the 60 quid. 260 quid you charge an hour, woman. Are you off the fucking head? Seriously. 260 quid for an hour. 230, 230. Oh, sorry, 230. 230 quid. Fuck me. I go into Eurospar and buy Playboy magazine or fucking March 40 magazine, whatever it's there, for five quid and pull the plum on myself looking at that rat and give you 240 quid for an hour. And it takes me ten, probably ten minutes to shoot me loud. Okay, we got you. I got your point. Yep, I got yeah. your point as well. All right, look, th- thanks, John. I'm going to have to wrap this up. Rachel, I appreciate you. I know a lot of people listening uh, find it very difficult to or hard to listen to a prostitute speak so o- openly. Other people, I have to be honest with you, uh, have been calling in saying fair play to you that you know what you are, you know what you're doing, uh, you feel safe enough. Um, and you're prepared to take the risk for what your ultimate aim is. So I appreciate you talking to us tonight, and thanks very much, and be safe. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. There you go.